When I was a little boy, I seen a mystery in everything. Grandmammy said I had an eye to be a detective. One day, I was in her attic doing some detective work. And I found this hidden box. And in it was a chest. So I opened it up. And there were documents from long time ago. Great Grandmammy said they were passed down from generation to generation. And one day they will be yours. Great great grandpappy was a medic. He volunteered for the Confederate military. He was soon promoted, so he had a fight. While he noticed why white and black people were treated poorly, their families were at home starving. So he deserted not once but twice. When they caught him, they tied him up, whipped him, and tortured him. But he didn't stop there. He got a band of brothers together to stand up to the Confederates. They fought guerrilla warfare by night. Soon they took back their towns, took back their counties. True patriots they were. But the Democrats didn't stop there. They burned them out of their homes, harassed them. Republican families where the black or white were harassed and intimidated. Some call great great grandpappy a traitor. Some call him a leader and a hero. I call him family. It's been a long time since I've been back home with great 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 and Pappy laid the rest. But I carried on to the tradition and became a detective. I was a BSA. You know, hunt down psychopaths and serial killers. Sociopaths. I was good at it too. But you know, I never stopped digging in that old box of Green Green Pappas documents. But now that I'm older and I'm retired, I think it's time to take care of some unfinished business. The Dawn of the Plantation. The Democrat plantation had somewhat humble beginnings. Started by Martin Van Buren. He was from Kinderhook, New York. They called him the Kinderhook Fox. Him and his good friend Andrew Jackson started the Democrat Party. Martin Van Buren, he was a mastermind though. They called him the little magician, the first politician. They used the donkey as a symbol because Andrew Jackson was known as a jackass. Andrew Jackson was sworn in as seventh president of the United States. First thing he did when he got in, he wanted to expand westward. So he signed the Indian Removal Act of 1830, sending Native Americans westward to be later Oklahoma Territory. First it was Choctaw, then Seminole, then Creek, Chickasaw, later the Cherokee. They would later call it the Trail of Tears. Many died on that dreadful trail. Then came the Panic of 1837. The first depression was under a Democrat president. While the economy was crashing, the Democrats were too worried about how it was going to affect their slave trade. Martin Van Buren became the eighth president of the United States. The radical Democrats wanted Martin Van Buren to annex Texas, but Martin Van Buren was moving away from being so pro-slavery. So the radical Democrats were upset. They were about to throw him out to the sharks, but then then he was already drowning in bad publicity from Panic of 1837. So it was easy for Andrew Jackson and the radical Democrats just to kick him out of the Democrat party. If not, they were about to boil him like a frog. So Martin Van Buren started the Free Soil Party. Look at this Free Soil Party fly, Democrat, force feeding people slavery. If you didn't go along with it, they hang you by a tree or burn your family while they're in their home. This is why William Harris became ninth president of the United States and they blamed every bit of it on Martin Van Buren. The Radical Democrats. The Radical Democrats started the KKK by Democrats in the South to overthrow Republican states by intimidation or even violence. Dunn School in 1865. It was named after William Archibald Dunn. He was a professor from Columbia University. Thomas Dixon Jr. 
He was a Democrat who was an intimate friend of Woodrow Wilson. Wrote a book called The Klansman that depicted the Klan as heroes and D.W. Griffin, a Democrat and film director that was inspired by Dixon Jr.'s work. Created a radical Democrat film called Birth of a Nation. They called it a masterpiece. Hollywood called him the father of film. Looks more like the father of radical film propaganda to me. The Mistress of Death. Margaret Singer was born September 14, 1879 in Corning, New York. Her mother was a Catholic and her dad was an atheist. Your father was a sort of a village atheist who clashed with church authorities and because of his atheism, his earnings dwindled under community pressure. You and your brothers and sisters were known as, quote, children of the devil. End quote. She also later in life became a hardcore feminist. Margaret Singer started in a feminist newsletter called The Woman Rebel. Mrs. Singer, you said, where is the man to give me what the movement gives in joy and interest and freedom? Now, what was this joy, this freedom that you craved? Well, I don't remember that letter, who <laughs> it was written. But I think that it was not uh, a question of, uh, uh, of marriage at all. There was a, a certain satisfaction in uh, doing something that was going to alleviate the sufferings of women in particular. And I was quite a feminist at the time. Mm -hmm, obviously. And, uh, yes. And, uh, uh, Singer then got in trouble for sending obscenities through the postal service. Instead of facing trial, she fled to England to be with her mentor, Charles Vickery Drysdale. Drysdale was a Malthusian. This is where she learned about population control, reduction, and eugenics. Look at these eugenicists. Look like they climbed out the pits of hell. Shortly after, in 1921, Sanger opened the first American birth control league. Sanger was a Democrat. Is birth control of such vital importance internationally? Is it just to save women suffering? Is that the only reason in your mind? Well, not entirely. The population question is a great concern today. And the, the rate at which uh, the birth, births come in to the, we're saving them now. At one time, when children died, they didn't have the food. Mm -hmm. Here is an old magazine advertisement for birth control. Singer. You have helped to spread the birth control movement, not only here in the United States, but in Europe and the Orient as well. Why? Why is birth control of such vital importance internationally? Is it just to save women suffering? Is that the... You feel that birth control is essential to keep millions of people across the world from starving? Well, I think that birth control, if you keep the population uh, more or less static until you pick up your resources, Certainly, you'll keep them from preventing their starting. Luther Starter, a racist eugenicist handpicked by Sanger to be the head on the board for the American Birth Control League. Goebbels, Nazi propaganda minister, personally sent CBS and NBC an invitation to send for Starter so he could do their interview. Goebbels and the Nazis were familiar with Sanger and Starter's work. In fact, they used American eugenicists, ideas like Sanger Starter and others for first sterilization and ethnic cleansing programs. Here we have Margaret Sanger giving praise to Ernest Rudolf, the eugenicist from Nazi Germany. He wrote the sterilization laws for Hitler and his regime. Here are some of the elite that have donated millions over the years. This had helped the American Birth Control League become Planned Parenthood. During this time at Planned Parenthood, they developed programs for sterilization and euthanasia, whether that was voluntary or done by force. Planned Parenthood deemed people of color to be unfit and feeble-minded. So they started the Negro Project. 
So in order for Singer to earn the trust of the black community, she recruited black Democrats like William DeBoss. Mary Jane McLeod Bethune. Adam Clayton Powell Jr., black Baptist preacher, and she also recruited Dr. Clarence Gamble. Look at the letter she wrote to him on the eugenics operation of the Negro Project. We do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the man who can straighten that idea out if it ever occurs into their more rebellious members. In closing, ever since I opened that box and found those documents, my life ain't never been the same. Even though the Democrat plantation might have had humble beginnings with Martin Van Buren, it was soon taken over by the radicals. It went from the KKK to Margaret Sanger and the eugenicist. I have studied many behaviors of psychopaths and sociopaths, but I've never seen any behavior like this before. These people are so slick, so sly, so cunning, they made my skin crawl. These radical Democrats weren't just anti-human, they were anti-God. They hated everything that was good. The only question is, are you going to get off the plantation or are you going to stay on the plantation? website get some of our merch it will help support us and continue to make videos like this thank you very much